Hey everybody. Hello, hello. It's me, Aggie. I am going to do another demo here. This one, I want to show you how to use a liner brush to do some outlines of florals. Okay. So I've got myself some black acrylic paint. This is actually a heavy body or medium body paint. I'm going to put some water on that and I'm using a script liner brush. So it's very important that you, you do have to use a liner brush. Okay. This is a, a Blick Wonder White Scholastic script brush. I don't know what size it is. It's probably a four. And what I want to do is make myself some real nice, juicy, watery paint. Probably need to get this camera a little bit closer here. Okay, so I've got some nice liquidy paint and <clears throat> I think I'm just gonna show you this on copy paper for now, but um, should have grabbed some more. I think I do have some more over here, hold on. <laughs> I have to walk around my table because of a cord. Sorry, hold on. That's okay. He'll give a few people time to uh, join. So this is a great way to practice. Uh, you could do it, you know, you could do a with pencil. When you're doing this on a canvas, let's see, where are my pencils? <laughs> oh, really? Okay, here's one. So when you're doing this on a canvas, you could use um, some sort of chalk or, oh, now I'm forgetting what these are called. I have a bunch of these. Let me see if I can find them. Uh, they're little pastels. Anybody remember the name of these? <laughs> oh, here they are. Here, they're new pastels. So I do have a nice collection of new pastels. You don't need to run out and buy new pastels, but um, they are kind of nice to have. This is showing up on camera. Um, if you're a painter, because um, they're kind of an upgrade from chalk. You can use like this is a is this white or gray. Oh, this is white. So I could literally use this on this canvas over here that you see over here. I mean, I could use this to, to draw some shapes on here and, and then use my paint to outline. So if you're more comfortable, most people are more comfortable with a dry medium like that, but um, so that's just an idea. Okay. So, for now, let's just practice drawing some flowers and then inking them. I want you to learn how to use a script liner brush to actually paint your outlines. Um, like you see how I did on my flower shower up there. So here, if you're taking my class, you know that I'm providing you with a few drawings like this of a mixed floral bouquet. And um, some of these are roses. A really easy one to start with might be tulips, right? So let's just roughly draw some uh, tulips on here. Um, they are, I called them a squoval earlier today. They basically are, it's kind of like a square that's been a little bit rounded. A square that, a square and an oval. If a square and an oval had a baby, it would be a squoval. And you could make it just a little bit more triangular if you'd like, you know, something like that maybe. I'm kind of turned the wrong way, aren't I? 
Okay, so something like that. And to make it really look like a tulip, all you need to do is um, some gesture of a couple of petals in the in the front. Okay. And of course, tulips have the stems. And then let's just, for the heck of it, put, um, you know, a couple of leaves in here, right? So this is just practice. We're just practicing. So let's go ahead and do these now. So here's what I want to show you first. First and foremost, rule number one, you have to have a script liner brush because it's going to hold more. The, bris the bristles are longer. It can hold a lot more paint. That way you won't have to go back and reload your brush, which is going to give you a more fluid line. So um, let me just show you um, how long of a line I can get with this. Now, what I want you to notice is if I put the, the point straight up, I can get a pretty nice line. I'm probably going to be able to go quite a long ways with one brush load. Look how long of a line I can paint. I haven't even reloaded my brush. And I could probably keep going. Now it's starting to get a little bit dry and I actually really like that effect, but you get the idea, right? That was all from one brush load of paint. Sorry, I have to turn around to see if I'm on camera the way I'm set up right now. So that was all just one brush load of paint. And now you cannot do that with a regular paintbrush. It just, it's not gonna happen. So that's one thing. Now, the other thing I wanna show you is I'm gonna get different effects depending on the angle, how I point the handle of the brush. So I want you to notice, I'm gonna wipe this off just a little bit. When I first uh, load my brush, here's how to load it. If I just do this and come away, it's really, really loaded. Can you see how loaded it is? And it's a little bit fat at the very tip. Um, I want you to get rid of that, just touch it against the rim of your plate and twirl, okay? And you can see how watery my paint is. It's kind of like milk. And look at the difference now. If you look at the very tip of the brush, it's much thinner, right? And I'm turning it and you can see that it's a lot thinner than it was a few seconds ago. This is how you want the tip of your brush to look when you want a nice elegant line. Now, um, so, I'm gonna just hold my brush at a 90 degree angle. It's straight up and just the tip is touching the paper. And I'm moving my arm and I'm keeping it in even pressure. I'm moving my arm, not my wrist. My wrist is stable. So I got a nice thin line from doing that, right? Um, now I'm gonna load it again. Again, look how thick it is. I need to get rid of the excess off the very tip. And now that's better. Now I want to do something a little bit different. I'm going to start out with my brush at that 90 degree angle. My brush is pretty much straight up and down, but I'm going to tilt the brush down. And of course, then I get a much fatter line. So when you, you can change your, I'm going to tilt this towards me because it's more comfortable. And that's the other thing. Make sure you're comfortable. Make your body really, really comfortable with how you're painting. And um, let's load it properly, wipe it off. So I'm just gonna start like this and push down. Now that was a little bit different. I'm actually pushing down on the ferrule. I'm, I'm well, I'm bending, I'm actually bending the bristles to get that thicker line and I can pull back up so it's applying pressure, easing up on the pressure to get thick to thin lines. And then if you practice doing curves, I can go thick to thin. 
And then I can go thin to thick, thin to thick, thin to thick. These are all really good practice exercises for you. Let's practice a circle. Try doing a circle all one weight of line. The point is not to get a perfect circle, but to get an even weight of the line. Okay, I'm getting even weights. Um, now I want you to make it an uneven weight. So maybe like for a leaf, for example, let's practice doing some leaves. I mean, once you kind of get that down in your head, it's very easy. All right, now did any of you guys, if you, if you knew this, comment below, or if this is new information to you, um, I'm really curious if you knew this. I, I learned this from face painting, believe it or not. Um, yep, I learned it from a Belgian face painter. I can stabilize my pinky, my hand by putting my pinky down. Okay, so really big leaves and they're not too hard when they're that big. Um, if you're doing on a much smaller scale, I would use a much smaller liner brush. So those are leaves and those pretty much look a lot like the leaves that we are doing. You could do a, a little variation, maybe have some swirls in there like that. Maybe that's a sunflower leaf. So let's practice a few more of those. Something like that. Just keep it simple. Okay, so those are some leaves. The other kind of leaf that we're going to do in the class is a vine. It's sort of a vine that comes down. And then there are little leaves on there. I like them rounded better. See, my brush, I'm not good at going that way with it. So I would just come back around and finish the stroke. So those are the different kinds of leaves that we are doing for this particular project. So now I want to do the tulips with you, okay? So again, it's kind of a squoval, right? Let's go back to our pencil and do it on here first. So let's do the leaf first. Okay, those are the leaves. And just for a really light touch to do this top maybe, Okay, so maybe, and you can have an opening. You don't have to complete all of the lines. They don't have to all touch. So maybe this one would come out like this. And that's a background one, so we don't want too much emphasis on that one. And there's that one.
you know, and then maybe there would be um, a flower in front of this one. So anyway, those are the tulips. Um, the other flower, we've got a daisy on here. So daisy is a little bit more complicated. And what happens is your paint's going to start to thicken up just a little bit. You'll feel it. So just add a little bit more water. Keep it nice and loose. So um, let's do the daisy. You know, it's just a circle. And the petals, they don't all have to be the same. I like to like, just like when I'm sketching, I like to move around the clock dial, if you will, so that I make them even. Otherwise I tend to not make them even. Sometimes they're kind of behind other petals. Sometimes there's shorter ones in front. So let's do a couple of um, short ones. So rewatch the video and look at how that look at the angle of my of the top of my um, brush. That one's a little bit tight. The more you do, you know, the looser that you'll get. Um, admittedly, these are a little bit harder. I'd rather not have it perfect looking. I think it's a lot more interesting. <laughs> See, I'm going a little bit off there. That's why you're better off. Well, first of all, I didn't have a pencil drawing. A pencil drawing is gonna help a lot. Let's see how much better. I do with a pencil. I could even have a rough outline around it. That would certainly help me. I'll probably do a lot better on this one because I did the pencil sketch. You could do that in chalk on your canvas. This is a little bit of a large brush for this particular size. And then you could certainly turn this. Maybe you like doing it um, this way better. Think about which direction feels more comfortable for you. I guess this direction feels a lot more comfortable for me going away from the center. Getting a little thick again. Remember to twirl on the rim of the plate. Okay, so that would be a daisy. Let's next do a lily. And what do daisy flower look, uh, leaves look like? I think they have really weird looking leaves, right? They're kind of... Um, like that, right? They're, they're kind of weedy looking. So that's a fun daisy leaf. Okay, let's do a lily. So a uh, lily has six petals. Um, and I like drawing the stamens first. 
So it's like a triangle. And maybe that's going to be going up like that. And so then the other petals would come out this way. So just think of, you know, two triangles. Okay, and then we're gonna paint those in. So it's a little bit thick, getting a little bit more water. It's, it's amazing how quickly it can, it really can start to get kind of thick. And again, this one is a head on. <laughs> kind of exaggerated those stamens a little bit. And then of course you'd have the, the dots on there that really helps. And if you do the dots, whatever way you do them, do them consistently on all of your leaves. So this is just a real quickie version of a lily. Okay, so that would be an example of a lily. Um, how about a sunflower? My favorite is a sunflower. Very big center and triangular petals. So they, they usually have Again, point, point the um, handle of your brush upward. Try and keep it upward. And just find, you know, find your rhythm. How does it, what, what way it feels comfortable for you? So that's what I'm saying. If you practice these on paper, you're kind of um, getting your hand-eye coordination going. And it's just very helpful. And then there's usually a little bit of an indication of a center in there. These sunflower leaves are really big and wide, like we were saying earlier. So maybe it would be like something like that for a sunflower leaf. And, you know, we did a demo of a sideways sunflower. So maybe you'd have kind of the back of a sunflower And here would be the center of it. And the petals are gonna kinda come in and cover the center. And then like over here, we'd start to see them, the, you know, the, the full length of them. Okay, so then to outline that, and you know, at any time you feel like you don't have enough in your brush or it's too thick or too thin, you know, you can always just um, repoint it on the edge of the of your palette. Okay, so that would be a sunflower. Roses, we're going to just do really, really simple really super simple
you know, and, and mostly it's going to be that beautiful leaf. They have such pretty leaves. And, you know, so the, the leaves are really going to contrast them. And if you can get the points on the leaves, you know, they kind of have these little um, spikes. That really tells you it's a, um, a rose leaf, you know what I mean? Like that, so that would be rose. And I think the last thing I wanted to show you is a mum. So there's a lot of little lines with a mum. So these are these are little tiny like button mums. Well, they're not button mums, but they're small mums. So you might even use a paint pen for that on your project because it would certainly make it a lot easier. But you definitely have to have um, that that oval shape, and you have to know where the center is. So maybe right there is my center, and probably we'll put two of them together. How's that with a couple little leaves? Okay, so for this, it's gonna be hard with such a long, <laughs> with such long bristles on this one. Um, okay, let's see, I've got some comments here. Hello, hello. Who do we have here? Do you add water or medium to your paint or is it a special fluid paint? Okay, so for this, I probably answered your question already. I actually just used Blick acrylic. Mars Black, um, you know, so this is actually a medium body paint, I believe, but I added water and I, I like using water. I really rarely use mediums. I do use a lot of fluid acrylic paints. So when I outlined my um, flower shower painting, I used Payne's Gray Fluid, the Golden Fluid Acrylics with water. But, you know, you don't have to do that. You can just add water. So hopefully that answers your question. Not sure who that was. And then, okay. Hi, hi Taha. <laughs> this is the technique I use when writing on my door hangers. Okay, awesome. Yes. So you know a thing or two about loading your brush and all of that. That's great. All right. Yeah, like especially if you're doing lettering, you have to use these techniques. Um, all right. So I'm just going to start with, yeah, this is going to be hard with this little one. I might, I might, I'll do it with this one and then I'm going to go get a larger, actually I have one right here. And this, for these Princeton select liners are awesome. I'm just going to use this one. I think what do I do with my cup of water. Oh, I didn't even bring it over here. So I immediately rinsed out my brush. Take care of your line of brushes. So I'm gonna wet this brush in water first. And look how nice and, this is gonna be much easier to work with for this size. Okay, so get it loaded. Same thing with this. Even this one can have a, a overly loaded tip. <laughs> okay. And I'm gonna come way down on the end of this ferrule. Hopefully you can see me. Yeah, I think you can. Probably get a little bit closer. Am I on camera? Yes, I actually am. Okay. So I'm not going to do every single one. Reload.
they they're almost like a brick brick laid pattern but okay i'm just around about at the outside edge of this So honestly, that would be what I would do for a mom. I would just leave it like that. It, it's telling enough of a story. You don't have to tell the whole story. Okay, and then here's the other one. Maybe I would just put three in the middle. That's not the great. A pen would definitely make it a lot easier. Trying to do less on this one. I think that would work. What do you think? And then maybe just a couple of um, small leaves. All right, so those would be a couple of little mums. So that's, that's it. So the main thing I want you to hopefully come away with is that the way that you load the brush. Um, so you want to fully load it. <laughs> fully load it and then wipe the tip. Wipe the tip and also twirl it. Okay. Um, first rule is you have to use a liner brush. have to use a liner brush. You want to fully load it. Oh, the paint. Um, I guess 1A, I should have said. The way you, yeah, it has to be, um, so you have to add water. Add water so that it's like milk consistency. Consist 10 C. Okay, that's really important. Well, I have it really sideways. Really, really important that it's um, like milk consistency. Um, fully load it, wipe the tip off. Okay, and then watch the angle of your brush. The angle of the handle. You know, maybe you're gonna have it um, at 90 degrees or whatever. So like, let's say this is our brush. This is the little ferrule. <laughs> this is the paper. So the brush is at a, like a 90 degree angle to the paper, um, right? Um, for variation, now you do want, always you want variation, even in your lines for variation. Uh, 
uh, for the weight of the line. You want to um, push down on the bristles. Push down. the bristles. Um, you know, also you can change the angle. Change the angle of the pen, of the handle, I'm sorry. Or change the angle of handle. So the more the brush is laying down, the fatter it's probably going to be. This is almost laying down all the way, as opposed to when the when it's straight up, it's only the tip of the bristles that are touching. So those are my tips. I hope this was helpful. If so, um, please comment below and um, let me know if you got anything out of this. And that's it. Have a great day. Bye.